What's happening, Polite Society? I hope you had a good week. Shout out to Susie who recommended the subject for this week's video. Today we're going to take a quick look at the tragic story of Jimmy Swaggart. If you're a fellow believer and you've been around as long as I have, then you've probably heard about Jimmy Lee Swaggart. Jimmy Swaggart rose to fame in the 1970s through his weekly telecast. In 1980, the televangelist extended this telecast to a daily weekday format, which featured religious teachings and music. The program included a service from either Swaggart's own church or a Swaggart cross-country crusade. By 1983, more than 250 television stations across the nation were broadcasting the religious leader's show. Despite his early success, most people today primarily remember Jimmy Swaggart for the stunning misconduct he was involved in. Before I discuss that scandal, let me mention another major fiasco that occurred in Mr. Swaggart's career. This was his embarrassing and painful to watch debate performance against Islamic apologist Ahmed Didat. Didat's arguments against the Christian faith are horrendous and easily refutable, as Dr. James White has demonstrated in debate against Didat's heir apparent, Shikawal. So seeing the late Didot mop the floor with Swaggart clearly demonstrated the latter's lack of biblical prowess. This should come as no surprise considering the facile and heretical beliefs that the televangelist holds to. Like many false leaders, Swaggart twists key biblical doctrines in order to align them with his fallacious teachings. In his book, Eat Your Way to Life and Health, Word of Faith teacher Joseph Prince presented a bizarre interpretation of Holy Communion, in which he stated that the bread and wine can be used as a channel for receiving healing, health, and wholeness. Similar to Prince, Swaggart holds to an unorthodox teaching about the cross. Mr. Swaggart believes that the cross provides healing for the human body through answered prayer. Of course, both Prince and Swaggart's prosperity twistings of the Holy Meal and the cross, respectively, can in no way be substantiated by sound biblical exegesis. In terms of the cross, Christ, by his obedience and death, fully discharged the debt of all those that are justified, and he made a proper, real, and full satisfaction to his Father's justice on our behalf. And the Lord's Supper is a means of grace in which, by giving and receiving bread and wine according to our Lord's instructions, his death is showcased, and the worthy receivers are, not in a false Roman Catholic fashion, eating and drinking Jesus' literal body, but by faith we are made partakers of his body and blood, with all his benefits to our spiritual nourishment and our growth in grace. Turning back to our subject, Mr. Swaggart's huge fall, which was widely publicized, came in 1988. Swigert's exposure came as retaliation for an incident in 1986 in which he exposed fellow Assemblies of God minister Marvin Gorman, who had been accused of having several affairs. Swigert was caught in a hotel room with a local prostitute. On February 21, 1988, without giving any details regarding the specific nature of his wrongdoing, the televangelist gave his now infamous I have sinned speech. The speech has been parodied multiple times in popular culture since then. On March 2nd, 1988, John MacArthur delivered a famous message titled, Lessons to Learn from the Fall of Jimmy Swaggart. I posted a link to the full lecture down below. Dr. MacArthur laid out 12 key lessons which Mr. Swaggart's tragic case can teach us. Let me just mention a few of them. False spiritual standards cannot restrain the flesh. There is tremendous danger in shallow theology. It is incredibly important to uphold the true standard for spiritual leadership. Hypocrisy is supremely ugly, and self-deception can be very powerful. Lesser known is the second scandal in 1991, in which Swaggart was again caught in the company of a prostitute, who claimed that Jimmy had propositioned her. Despite these blatant violations of biblical mandates, which led to his defrocking by the AOG, today Mr. Swaggart continues to maintain a televangelist ministry. His Sun Life Broadcasting Network still helps the leader rake in a substantial sum of money. In summation, as we look back at the sad case of Jimmy Swaggart, we must remind ourselves of the high standards required of pastor elders. Christian ministry is a high calling, and all those who desire to be men of the word must consider the cost very carefully. Ladies and gents, if you have your own thoughts, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked that video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like the content here, you can subscribe by clicking on the icon on the bottom right. Then you can hit the bell for notifications. I upload a new video every Wednesday and every Saturday. Have an awesome week, and for my brothers and sisters in the Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. I will see you all in the next video. God's blessings on your week.